Hello, everybody. It's Dave Neal, stand-up comic host of Bachelor Nation News. Happy Hump Day, and Hump Day is very apropos to the conversation around the paternity scandal involving Clayton Eckerd and an unnamed woman. Now, this scandal is public. Plenty of people, hundreds, thousands, maybe tens of thousands, watched yesterday as it was revealed that the court case was being streamed publicly and legally in the Arizona court system. Well, let's discuss Clayton's wild day in court. I've said this all along. My battle in the moment is not to go after the person who claims to have twins that are fathered by Clayton Eckert. He claims to only have had oral sex with this person. My battle is not with her currently, although she is uh, threatening multiple lawsuits against me. She has sent me a cease and desist. She has emailed me multiple times. Sometimes I think it's because she wants me to share her story and sometimes not. She accused me of only sharing Clayton's side, even though we know uh, we can look at the timestamp of over 20 videos where I've actually shared her side of the story first. Of course, she leaked, and it hasn't been protested, information to The Sun, a tabloid magazine, that claims uh, that she had contacted Scottsdale police because she was worried about the safety of her unborn twins, when in fact it seems that everyone who's covering this case is worried about their own safety from her, including myself. And that's an opinion I can live with. The fact that I have to wonder, does she know where I live? I'm a stand-up comedian. I perform shows all over the place, and I tell you where I'm going to be. And what are her motives and intentions? Now, you can look at it this way. She could be pregnant. They could be Clayton's twins. I haven't seen a paternity test. I just know that Clayton says, when he looked at his, when he got the results in, they said there was little to no fetal DNA. And then when they went to take another test... She had to cancel because she had to go to her neurologist. These are all facts, folks. And then when she ended up taking the test again, it was delayed in transit. That's odd. Now, I'm not blaming her for, you know, pulling a truck over and delaying the test so the blood samples were bad. Not at all. I don't know why it was delayed, but she was supposed to take it again. And apparently now she has taken that test and we'll wait for it to come in. But I'm okay uh, living and dying by the legal system. I'm okay sharing my opinion on these matters. And that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to share a, summary, a, su a summarization of what Clayton alleged and what she alleged. They went back and forth. The court case lasted over an hour, and it did not finish. Uh, Jane Doe's lawyer gave Clayton a thumb drive 20 minutes before trial, and Clayton says, I don't have a laptop with me. I don't have any anything with me to even look at these files. And he claimed, well, you know, there is no need for discoverables beforehand or what have you. And the case was then not necessarily postponed, but the judge said, we're going to finish this next week. And that case is going to be uh, uh, finished on November 2nd, which we, again, will discuss. I mean, I'm going to discuss this case till people knock my walls down and rip the laptop out of my hands. This is a case worth discussing. She is a public figure. He is a public figure. And lawsuits have been threatened to me, to Reality Steve, to Reddit moderators. Heck, just about to anyone covering this. I have to tell you, one of my biggest disappointments so far is seeing the lack of Bachelor alumni that have come to Clayton's aid. I understand people are afraid. Nick Vial uh, teased that he was going to talk about this, and then when it came down to it, he pulled that episode. He pulled the clip where he talked about it with Rachel Recchia. He ended up talking about it with Gabby and Natalie, and they ended up making fun of him for being the victim of, or the alleged victim of, this paternity scandal. He denies having sex with her, and privately, she has made, and I'm going to say this one time, absolutely wild accusations about him. Accusations I'm not prepared to share, but that she stands by because she emailed those to me and multiple people. Now, could she claim that that wasn't her and her account was hacked? That's what she claimed when we provided what I believe to be bulletproof evidence that a sonogram was doctored, a sonogram, and again, we showed you this and we could show it again and again and again, a sonogram that was doctored, it's on my Instagram account, I have not taken it down, even though she has threatened to sue me for keeping it up. That sonogram shows that a six-year-old video, a YouTube video, was used and claimed to be hers. The timestamp was changed uh, incorrectly. The uh, way her name was labeled on it was incorrect. And 
she and it was edited to show that uh, you know other information was left out. Now she then claimed that that wasn't hers and that her account was hacked and sent to us from an ex. Those are her claims. I guess it'll come down to a judge whether he believes her or not. Let me put this one way and one way only. If she wants to come after me in the legal system, we are fully prepared with our army of supporters to man the fuck up. And that's the only way we can do this moving forward. She sent me a cease and desist letter. We removed 20 videos. I made a video yesterday showing that there was a smear campaign against Clayton. Now, if people want to put those pieces together, I'm not going to stop the audience, but I never once mentioned her name or the name Jane Doe. All I said was somebody that is out there has a sinister motivation to cancel Clayton Eckerd. We showed you that information. She then emailed me saying I was, you know, harassing her still, and she plans to sue me for harassment. I want nothing to do with her. I want everything to do with Clayton speaking his truth. If there is collateral damage to his truth, which would come out if he is telling the truth that she's lying, uh, not just under oath, but with medical fraud left and right, if that's the truth, then that's a price and a consequence she will have to pay for. Now, does she come from more money than I do? Well, let's put it this way. I don't ride horses, okay? I got an old dog. He cost me a lot of money. It's the exact opposite. People, horses have money. People who have dogs don't have money. That's the difference, right? Uh, Yeah, my dog has very expensive dog food here. I do not have the resources, I believe, that she does in my bank account. What I do have is a platform to discuss the truth, and that's what we're going to do here, even if that has to be wordy. The amount of people on Reddit, which I've had my gripes with in the past, but the amount of people that have supported Clayton, myself, strangers, with GoFundMes for legal fees and things like that, is absolutely amazing. Again, I'm just disappointed that so far, the only people that have donated to his legal funds are an ex-girlfriend of his, Susie Evans, and someone else who's been sued and had to go through, or not sued, but who has had to go through the legal system, and that's Blake Horstman. Um, Reality Steve, Bachelor Data, gave sizable donations. Well, we will get into this in a little bit and share the legal funds. I set it for 2,500, raised it to 5,000. The money goes completely to Clayton Eckert. He's a sole beneficiary. I do not have a bank account attached to this. And people say, well, does he, $3,200, does he need the money? He was a bachelor. He's probably rolling in money. He claims yesterday that she has reached out to all of the different nonprofits that he works with and companies that he's collaborating with to essentially cancel him. Much like we received the information that this anonymous journalist is trying to cancel him. I mean, the anonymous journalist literally said he should be canceled and then blasted out to every media organization they could get their hands on. So it is a bummer that it is the laymen here, the locals, the supporters, the fans, the audience that are doing the heavy lifting when there are plenty of alumni that don't want to dabble in this conversation because... It doesn't help them. And that's where we need to really look in the mirror and say, is it about, no, look, does this help me? These videos don't, I mean, come on, really? Like, trust me, trust me. This doesn't help me. Wondering at night if I'm about to get in a lawsuit that's going to affect my family as I'm trying to do very simple things like start a family, buy a home, you know, very simple things that I'm trying to do, right? No one has the time or energy to be sued and for the legal system to be clogged by such uh, bullshit like this. Nearly everything I've said has been mischaracterized, taken out of context, and used against me to threaten me. But I'm going to continue sharing my opinion. And I'm going to continue to beg people, don't harass her. That only gives her the ammo that she needs to fulfill whatever love story is going on here, this uh, parasocial relationship that's happening. So I'm going to keep it on my main screen, just so I can read a few things from summary and try to redact whatever I can. And this is all information that's online. And I, like I said, while I've got copies of yesterday's proceedings, I'm going to share a summary of what each person said. Clayton has received continued and unwanted communication from the anonymous women, he claims, from multiple phone numbers. He's blocking the numbers and then she'll get another one and contacting him. Now, it's my belief that as he makes these claims, he's already provided the judge with evidence. I'm not sure how that works. But again, she had a lawyer, bottom left-hand corner, judge bottom right, and she's right there on the top left. She had a lawyer and he didn't. The lawyer objected to a bunch of things. And trust me, Clayton, as much as he prepared, 
And he discusses on this week's episode of Driving with Dave on Saturday. He discusses how he prepared for this. But as much as he's prepared, he he doesn't know the legal system. And even though he believes in his his truth, in the truth that would set him free, it needs to set him free with a with the guidance of someone who understands the legal system a little bit better. And that's why we're raising funds for him, funds that he has approved of. So he claims that she refused a paternity test until he went public with him purchasing the test, and then she agreed to take it. He claims she took the first test and the results came back little to no fetal DNA. Uh, so she doesn't dispute those results, which she called a diluted sample. And so she was set to take another test, but then never showed up. Of course, that's when she claims she went to the neurologist. She then sent another sample, but it was lost in transit. And then Clayton stated his opinion was that she intercepted the package delivery. Her facial expression was shocked at this point. Um, she gave blood the day before the hearing, and she's awaiting those results. So we'll hear back from those results. Her lawyer questioned her, and his questions were very much geared towards showing that her communication was explicitly about the pregnancy and DNA testing, and that proves that she's not harassing him. She's just talking about the pregnancy. They have a pending family law case that is separate that Clayton's injunction he was seeking at yesterday's hearing. So the separate, as far as I uh, know, the separate... Court hearing is actually this morning and it's happening literally right now. So we're going to have information about that as it comes out. Hit the subscribe button and like this video to make sure you get that content in the algorithm. Uh, she admitted that she contacted an organization where he was set to have a speaking event and told them that if Clayton ignored her, someone who has been suicidal and needs him to respond to her, then how can he be trusted to respond to someone else in need? The assumption is that he lost the speaking engagement due to her contacting them, but that wasn't explicitly stated. Now, he has claimed that after that he did receive an email from her saying that she was suicidal and that he should never he, he claims he should never and nobody should ever receive an email like that from somebody, of course, assuming that um, it's used in a way uh, you know, of malicious intent. She stated multiple times that Clayton doesn't believe she's pregnant. And at the end, she even asked the judge if she could show the judge that she's pregnant. And because he hasn't seen her, the judge curtly said, no, it was a jaw dropping moment, folks. It was a moment that as everyone watched, they said, oh my gosh, I can't believe this. She had presented to the judge exhibits, including one titled something like Clayton's threatening and cruel text messages. Clayton was presented with those exhibits 20 minutes before the hearing. Her lawyer tried to argue that he has no legal obligation to present them to Clayton in advance, which may be the case. I'm not really sure. Uh, but either way, the judge said, look, we need to let him see these messages. And the truth is, Clayton has sent her... Uh, you know, we're going to see. I mean, uh, Clayton has sent her messages that that are not kind, to, to say the least. And we're going to see those come out. Uh, the question is, did he have a right if he is a victim of a paternity scandal? So it really all comes down to this. If, she, if he did have sex with her and he's lying about it, then he's going to pay those consequences. As he has said in court, I believe he said this under oath, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe he said that they only had oral sex. So again, there's really no way to prove whether or not they did have sex. Even if she is pregnant, that becomes a whole nother conversation where could you have gotten pregnant with that? Look, guys, it's wild. But I have to give you know, I can't, I can't say it's a hundred percent in one direction or the other. We need to wait for those results to come in. One of the reasons why it's important that folks support him in court is because it's very likely I'm going to have to ask you all for support in court. It's very likely. And I think the best way to handle this situation is to let her know the amount of resource we actually have. It appears that the reason she's able to silence people is because they're afraid. They're afraid to speak out. Can't tell you how many people are afraid to share their opinions because they're afraid that they're going to have to go to court and have to deal with all this bullshit. I'm not afraid in the sense that I'm scared of her but I don't look forward to the consequences of covering this case. I don't look forward to that at all. But I am prepared to gear down because I don't know if she knows this about stand-up comedians. We are essentially cockroaches of the entertainment industry. You think you got us down, but we live un under very, very poor conditions. And I'm telling you right now, 
everybody has my back. Everybody in this community has come together for far less. And I would be very worried if I were her at what information would then become public. I mean, I've done nothing but protect her, to be quite honest. These aren't threats, folks. This is the reality of the situation. It's not something I want. She has presented to the judge, to the judge exhibits, including one titled something like Clayton's threatening and cruel text messages. We cover that. She claims Clayton's fans are harassing her in the comments and someone suggested she kill herself. Look, again, what a fan does is there, like, I, like Clayton has a quarter million followers. A percentage of those are probably purely psychopathic. Like a percentage of everyone out there, I think what, 1%? So these people exist. There's people that watch my content that I do not condone any of their actions. We have moderators that regularly try to scrub her name from our comment section, and um, and we try our very best, but it doesn't mean that a fan isn't going to harass her or DM her. Like, that's that's just going to happen, uh, and that is not the responsibility of the person uh, either creating the content because I'm not inciting any violence. I'm not asking people to do this whatsoever. If someone were to show up to the courthouse and yell at her, that wouldn't be because I told them to. So it got very interesting when, and apparently she was standing this whole time, okay? Five, six months pregnant, whatever the hell she is. I think it's fair to question what's going on here, and I don't feel like that is defamation for me to question these things. Her baby belly looked enormous, and it goes up to basically the base, the base of her chest. And she's standing the whole time. Now, when you look at it, you go, geez, she looks really pregnant. But then people shared photos from September 20th to the 24th where she's uh, riding horses as an equestrian. And she looks, at, at, at best, chubby, bloated, you know, burrito belly. So people questioning whether or not she's pregnant with twins when a month ago when she would have been four months pregnant with twins you know the pants button up all the way and this and that so people start looking at this and go huh and then there's literally moments where she's moving her belly again i'm not claiming it's a prosthetic i don't know what it was i don't know what's inside that belly i don't know if it's two babies or silicone what i do know is that the sonograms she claimed were hers that she now says were hacked and whatever, that were uploaded to her Dropbox, that were sent to Reality Steve and me, where she actually told us not to share them because it would be violating her HIPAA rights, which is not true, but also HIPAA rights over a fake sonogram. That sonogram is not true. In fact, that is not hers. We know that for a fact. And I can say that from the rooftops. So she's standing there, pacing around, rubbing her belly. And people go, what the hell is going on? Now afterwards, I reached out to Clayton. I said, good job up there, man. I thought you were believable. I thought you came off well. I was trying to um, motivate him in a way because I'm sure even if, I'm sure as he left that courtroom, he felt icky because I've had to be, I've had to be deposed in accidents where I was the victim before and you just feel icky. Even if you slam dunk it, you feel icky. He goes, Clayton goes, what are you talking about? I said, you came off believable. He goes, how the hell, how do you know? I said, dude, we all watched it. He said, What? I said, we all watched it. The, all, the whole internet watched your court case. He didn't know it was being live streamed. Which makes you wonder, did she not know it was being live streamed? The camera was, for the most part, angled below her chin. Right here, you see that it was the moment where I believe she was shocked when he claimed that she intercepted the blood sample. The camera was from her chin to the middle to the top part of her belly. That's where the camera was at. Um, I don't know why. I don't know what her intentions are. I don't know why she was standing and not sitting, if in fact that's what she was doing. I don't know why um, a month ago it looked like she didn't have a belly and now she does. I don't know. I'm not uh, claiming in any way whatsoever to have any of the facts here. But damned if we're the bad guy for questioning this, questioning what some believe is medical fraud. Multiple cases, reverse Google searches of phony this and phony that, even ultrasounds that may be linked to, you know, places that you would go to to not get real ultrasounds. Whether this evidence is all used to expose her or not is yet to be seen. But if I am going to 
you know, be a subject of this weird trial, I'm going to need your help, guys. I'm going to need financial help. If I get sued and have to go to court and all that jazz, we'll put together a game plan, but it's going to have to be bulletproof. It's going to have to have the best attorneys. It's going to have to have all these things. Because what we watched yesterday was Clayton allegedly sharing his truth and yet getting held up with dozens of objections and this and that. And it'll be important that we meet this metaphorical war with the right amount of ammo. Here's Clayton's GoFundMe. If anyone has any money that they have that can go to a place like this, I'm asking for your donation. I get nothing out of this other than we get to show our support for what is a situation where we, it is now very evident he needs our help. So I understand some of the comments said this. There's a sucker born every minute. Do you guys realize how much money you can make on Instagram with 266,000 followers on top of his day job? This is five grand, not 500,000. Stop donating to rich people. This is almost as dumb as giving to Trump's legal fund. It's very different, folks. Uh, it's very different. Clayton has invested in a Airbnb that he's going to be launching in the spring and from all accounts doesn't have any cash to fight this battle. That's why he did it by himself. Um, I think, I mean, when I picked him up to do Driving with Dave, he was living in an apartment, guys. I mean, I don't, I don't, I'm not here to smear Clayton. I'm here to show you that a quarter million followers might not get you as far as it used to, especially when there are forces that are trying to F with your money. So I can understand why people might be upset by this. Uh, but these legal issues are not going away. She has threatened lawsuits to the Reddit moderators. She said, the amount of threats mocking me or this legal case is unacceptable. The intention of these posts is purely cyber harassment and cyber bullying, and they need to be removed. I already have made a police report giving the names of the suspicious users and mods. So I personally have talked with way more people than I'm letting on regarding these cases. And I have to tell you, the way somebody can use the legal system to their advantage in cases like this is eye-opening. The person, the moderator responded, I'm shaking in my anonymous boots. We won't be removing anything. Stop threatening usernames on the internet and focus on those twins of yours. If you feel the need, and I'm sure you will, you can reach out to the Reddit administrators. Godspeed. So my final thought in this video is that I will continue to share my opinion based on the evidence I've seen. At any point, she could have FaceTimed me from day one, knowing that I was one of the primary people covering this with a video of her showing the baby, show, waving the ultrasound in the hand. But no, everything has been sent with half truths. When you question her about the oral sex, she doesn't, she doesn't have a response until recently. Her, her responses have changed. When you question her about the sonogram, which is clearly doctored, at first she says nothing. And then she says, well, my ex hacked into my account. And for everyone to say, oh my gosh, this is so ridiculous. Yes, it is. And yet, she is moments away from continuing to silence people so that the truth doesn't come out. Now is our chance to do something about it. Link in the comment section if you want to donate to Clayton's GoFundMe. He is the sole beneficiary. I do not touch that money. If you do want to put bread in my tip jar and show support financially, you can go to patreon.com slash Dave Neal. I will continue to be discussing this case on patreon.com slash Dave Neal. We are uh, forced to be playing hardball here. Um, Jane Doe may or may not be a member of our Patreon. It is not impossible to vet everybody, but we will continue to talk about this. Your support is so appreciated. Hundreds of you have donated. Thank you all so, so much. More content coming your way right after this.